Are you wondering how to detect diabetes at an early stage? Are you wondering what the role of insulin is in looking at diabetes, blood sugar problems, and insulin resistance? My name is Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're going to look at that exact question, the role of insulin in early detection of diabetes, and the overall role of insulin as a marker for blood sugar issues. Now, for a quick disclaimer, the information in this video is for informational purposes only. It's not intended as a treatment for any health condition or as a substitute for seeing an actual doctor or medical profession should be used as an educational guide to deeper your understanding of your own health and treatment success. If medical attention is needed, don't delay in seeking that attention. All right, well, let's check out how to detect diabetes at an early stage through looking at insulin. So now we want to look at how to detect diabetes at an early stage through insulin measurements. So insulin is responsible for opening up the glucose transporters into the cells so that when you have blood sugar floating around through your arteries, that they can get into the tissues and cells. And when your pancreas is working well and appropriately, it'll produce the correct amount of insulin to allow direct that blood sugar into the cells in a proportionate way. So it's going to need to produce different levels of insulin based on the amount of blood glucose in the arteries. And it has basically sensors on it that allows it to know when the blood sugar is high, it's going to produce more of that insulin. This is helpful because it's the first line of defense against diabetes and other things that can happen from elevated blood sugar levels. When you consume high carbohydrate diet over long periods of time, your body produces a lot of insulin to compensate for and to get that carbohydrate into the cells and into the tissues. Over time, though, it is said that your tissues and cells get resistant to that insulin, and that's what we refer to as insulin resistance. In response, your pancreas has to produce more insulin to get that mealtime spike in blood sugar down into the normal range. You may not notice this when you're doing your fasting blood sugar test because your insulin levels are working overtime or your pancreas is working overtime and your insulin levels are so much higher unless you actually check your insulin levels. In some ways, we might say that this resistance is just your body's way of saying, I have enough food and I can't take any more into these cells. No, thank you. Find another person, find another place to put this carbohydrate. And just as an aside, some tissue issues are naturally more sensitive to insulin than others so that the pancreas produces more insulin in these more sensitive areas preferentially will take up that blood glucose and those carbohydrates preferably to other sites in your body. And this is typically in the abdomen and the visceral fat where that occurs. And this is partially why people struggle to lose weight in those specific areas because there's more insulin sensitivity here. It works better in those areas and opens up the cells, glucose transporters, so it can go inside. Now back to the question, how to detect diabetes at an early stage. As I mentioned earlier, measuring insulin actually is one of the best ways to detect diabetes at an early stage. And a lot of times it's missed or overlooked or not checked. And it turns out that there are different patterns of insulin resistance and different patterns of insulin elevation and low levels of insulin that one might look at but we'll go into that in more detail in another video. The basics though are to test for insulin in a fasting state. If you have an insulin level above seven to 10 at 10 to 12 hours fasting, it is likely that you have some level of insulin resistance. And it is, you know, based on the amount that's there, the higher the number, probably the more insulin resistance you have. Now the lab reference range is going to be much higher than this. It may even go to like 25. But what the test is telling us is that even when you're fasting for 10 to 12 hours, your body is still trying to get that blood sugar or manage that blood sugar the best that it can. And one of the ways it has to do that is to produce a lot of insulin. Part of that could be from the previous meal you had. Part of it could be just from your overall fluctuations in your blood sugar. So it's struggling to keep that blood sugar in a normal range and therefore has to produce higher amounts of insulin to help to keep that going up, even though you haven't consumed any food in 10 to 12 hours, if that those are the parameters of your test, which typically they would be. If your levels are less than seven, then probably you don't have much insulin resistance going on. But there is a caveat there. Sometimes your body may not be producing enough insulin. So too low of insulin could be a problem too. And basically the way that you would look at that is what's also your blood sugar levels and what is your hemoglobin A1C. If those are elevated, then you know that there's a problem with pancreatic failure or your pancreas isn't producing enough insulin. And there's various degrees of that as well. That is also known as ketosis prone type 2 diabetes, 
which we'll also do a separate video on that specific topic. So you'll know you have a problem with that if your insulin level is really low, but your blood sugar is too high. And next, we want to look at a little bit more detail on some of the insulin patterns and patterns of insulin resistance that were described by Dr. Kraft in the studies that he did on insulin resistance. All right, that should give you a better understanding of how to detect diabetes at an early stage through looking at insulin measurements. If you do have follow-up questions on this topic, drop it in the comment section. We may do a separate video on that. Definitely try and answer your question. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.